Welcome to another episode from the Veterinary Medicine Digest. Today, we're diving into the complex world of parathyroid disorders in dogs, focusing on primary hyperparathyroidism and renal secondary hyperparathyroidism, as well as some interesting new developments in diagnostic imaging during surgery. These conditions involve the parathyroid glands, which play a crucial role in regulating calcium in the body, primarily through the production of parathyroid hormone. Primary hyperparathyroidism is most commonly caused by abnormal changes, often a benign tumor called an adenoma, affecting one or sometimes multiple parathyroid glands. This leads to a chronic excess of parathyroid hormone secretion, resulting in elevated total and ionized calcium levels in the blood. Surgical removal of the affected parathyroid gland, known as parathyroidectomy, is a common treatment for primary hyperparathyroidism in dogs, similar to its use in humans. However, a significant and common complication following this surgery is the development of low blood calcium or hypocalcemia. Severe post-treatment hypocalcemia is recognized to occur in approximately 35 to 70% of dogs after parathyroidectomy. This is thought to happen because the remaining, previously suppressed parathyroid glands are slow to resume normal parathyroid hormone production, combined with rapid movement of calcium back into the bone, especially if the bones were previously affected by high parathyroid hormone levels. Hypocalcemia can manifest anywhere from 12 hours to 20 days after surgery, but it is most frequently observed 2 to 6 days post-operation. The clinical signs of low calcium can be quite serious, ranging from nervousness and increased sensitivity to touch, to muscle tremors, heart rhythm abnormalities, seizures, and even potentially death. Identifying which dogs are most likely to develop hypocalcemia after surgery could allow veterinarians to implement more targeted monitoring and earlier treatment interventions, potentially reducing the severity and impact of this complication. This is a key area of investigation in the veterinary field. That's right, and while primary hyperparathyroidism relates to a problem originating in the parathyroid glands themselves, parathyroid hormone levels can also be affected by other systemic diseases, notably chronic kidney disease. Renal secondary hyperparathyroidism is an unavoidable consequence of chronic kidney disease in dogs. It can begin early in the disease process, sometimes before changes in calcium and phosphorus levels are apparent, or even before the buildup of waste products in the blood, known as azotemia, is detected. This condition involves the parathyroid glands producing excessive parathyroid hormone in response to the changes in mineral metabolism caused by failing kidneys. Managing renal secondary hyperparathyroidism is considered a major goal in the care of human patients with chronic kidney disease, and research is ongoing to find effective and safe ways to manage it in dogs. Thank you for listening to the Veterinary Medicine Digest. Keep those minds inspired, hearts light, and tails wagging. If you're enjoying this, remember to like, share, and subscribe as proceeds from this channel go directly to providing vital veterinary care for animals in need.